Hello and welcome back to Nelson Oliver Cards. I am here with Villain Theory and we have a brand new hero announcement Nightcrawler that we're going to take a first look at. Now, we have not looked at anything past this. We are actually recording this about 15 minutes after it dropped because Villain Theory literally ran home to do this. <laughs> <laughs> true, completely true. I've not even seen the link, the article, anything yet. <laughs> well, let's give you a, a, a second to get the article because we're going to be walking through the rapid teleportation article on Fantasy Flight's website. Now, My this Discord is, is lit up like a, like a Christmas tree. Yeah. And it's just people sending it to me. <laughs> yeah, I had to mute Discord because I'm like, I don't want to see anything because this is a blind <laughs> react. We have not looked at any of this. And yeah. then, Villain, are you planning on doing one of the normal videos that you typically do where it's a deep dive analysis? And so, We've got to do a deep dive. Heck yeah. Okay, so once that video is out, it will be linked in this video down below in the description. I'm too pumped. Let's just do it. Okay, so Nightcrawler. Yeah. I kind of, I, I think we kind of all were expecting to see Nightcrawler, right? I, I wondered if it might be a scenario pack. Oh, interesting. Yep. Yeah. So Nightcrawler, I really like this color scheme, this purple, dark purple yeah. color scheme. I'm here for it. It looks like he's got his little, uh, not his little, but his uh, rapier, I guess I would call it. <laughs> I'd call it a rapier. Yeah, cutlassy rapier. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's some kind of uh, piratey sword. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so shun for his demonic appearance. Uh, Kurt Wagner's mutant heritage and gentle heart earns him a family in the X-Men. We're not going to read all of this, but I'm just kind of scanning to see. Pre-built protection deck. Oh, I do love nice. protection. I love yeah. protection. Protection's amazing. Okay, so it also includes a bonus modular set featuring the aptly named Crazy Gang. Okay, I'm also a fan of modular sets rather than off aspect cards in the packs. Yeah, who who are the crazy gang? I'm excited to see that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, me neither. Uh, okay, so Banff, as a mutant and member of the X-Men, Kurt Wagner. So we've got, oh, I like this art, him hanging upside down like this. So Kurt Wagner, three recovery, nine hit points. So pretty, pretty squishy here. Hand size of six. Search your deck for a copy of Banff and add it to your hand. Limit once per round. All righty. That's uh, that's nice. At least you get to search your deck. I'm curious how many of these we see, but basically we're starting with a hand size of seven at Alter Ego at that point. Yeah. The, the problem would be is if you have a Banff in, or you only have Banffs in your discard pile, I think that could be a uh, uh, a time that this would whiff because you're only searching your deck. Let's look. Let, you want to just hop over to see what Banff is? Yeah, let's do it. I'm liking the art here too. Yeah, dude. I yeah the the Christmas art colors. Here. Christmas color. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've got uh, Banff, a zero cost upgrade attached to an enemy. Alrighty, so already seeing I'm some intrigued. synergy with uh, some of the stuff we've been getting recently. Uh, hero interrupt hmm. defense. Oh, okay, okay. So this is a defense interrupt when the attached enemy attacks. Discard this card. Declare Nightcrawler as the defender without exhausting him. That is really cool. That is really I, cool. I hope they do some more collect combos with this in the thing. And I also love the art for this. It's really, really good. But protect the kind of defensive Nightcrawler, really cool. Getting one of those attachments, like you say, of the Iceman stuff we got, I am very excited. And it kind of makes sense, right? He's teleporting in to take the attack, right? Nightcrawler's kind of yeah. mutant powers is teleportation. And it's great because he's got this three defense. So with three defense and two thwart, I don't know if we've wow. seen the stat line before. Two, one, three, I think is a unique stat line. Yeah, it's like Ironheart's second level, but not yeah. a, like baseline one. We've never, I don't think. Interesting. That's interesting, yeah. I'm intrigued, super intrigued. Yeah, so without exhausting him, Nightcrawler gets to be a defender for... Uh, three defense. Rapid teleportation. He has an action. Spend one resource of any type. Return a copy of Banff from your discard pile to your hand. So, oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, so... This seems good. This seems good. You're 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 playing Banff all the time. I'm curious how many of these we're going to get. So, for a copy of Banff, which makes me think that we're going to see more than one. So, basically, you're always going to have access to it. There's, there's not a situation, unless it's being put under a Magneto side scheme or something like that, that you're going to be without a Banff. Yeah, this could be really interesting. So, you're having to pay a resource, you know, get some kind of return from your ability. 
but it's effectively defending without exhausting is kind of like readying in a way. So I think it's pretty good value. I am really excited about that. And if it's a, yeah, if it's a free defense every single round, then you can thwart. He's going to be a pretty fun, just from the, the one card out of the pack we've seen, he's going to be a fun protection hero. Just being able I, I, to, mm. yeah, go for it. No, I was just going to say, I'm really curious, like how you say how many bamps we're going to get. Because what if we could put one on all these different villains in a multi-villain scenario, that kind of thing. Oh, and you can, no. that'd be cool. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. And it stays out there until we use it. Right, so when the attack enemy yeah. attacks, and it's an interrupt, it's not a forced interrupt. So you can use this whenever you want. It's not required. So if there, you know, if frostbites, if there's nine frostbites on the enemy, or I guess six, you don't have to use this because he's not going to hit you for that hard. That's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I like this. I'm so curious. Like you can even put it on minions if you've got minions out that you know you can't get rid of, or you know maybe some prelates or surprise contender. And yeah, exciting. Yeah, and like the suppressing fire, or not the suppressing fire, the take that, and all of these synergies that we're getting with Cyclops as well, because this is an upgrade that's attached to an enemy. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Get a, however, Nightcrawler's true power lies within his events, which lets you utilize Banff upgrade for powerful kicker effects. Oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For example, you can discard a Banff from your hand to Scout Ahead. Scout Ahead is a one cost thwart event, superpower traded. Remove three threat from a scheme. You may discard a copy of BAM from your hand to remove three threat from another scheme. That seems crazy efficient. This is really good. So one cost for free threat removal is already like super flexible. It's a perfect, you know, if you solo play player side schemes, just being able to hit another side scheme or like scheme in general, if you want to as an option, it's efficient with or without that. That's really good. And superpower trait is always nice to see. Yeah. A one for three, we're looking good. And then so this is okay. So the Nightcrawler is a limit once per phase. I'm curious if we're going to see a defense event that grabs or that allows us to use this rapid teleportation in the villain phase. Um, mm. But if we're if we have multiple copies, if we search our deck and then use it for scout ahead, then we can use Nightcrawler's rapid teleportation to pull it back and get it ready for the villain phase. And so there's a there's a lot of sequencing that we're seeing here that we can use for Scout Ahead and probably some of these other events. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that this color scheme here is not more purple. I thought it's like a red yeah, black. I, I was kind of expecting a more of a purple. I like it. It matches like his outfit, I guess. But yeah, yeah it was uh, interesting. Interesting uh, choice, but pretty cool. Does it have to, it does have to be a separate scheme. So Scout Ahead can yeah. not hit the same scheme, which is probably fine. It's probably fine. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit, I think, um, of SPDRs. I think Hers can like hit two schemes if you pay the right way. Yeah. Alternatively, you could discard one to port away. You want to read this one for us? Yeah, let's do it. So this is a zero cost event. Port away. He's teleporting away in the art. Makes sense. <laughs> Action. Discard a copy of Bant from your hand. Change forms and ready your identity. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love the form changing. That's really cool. And it's a ready as well. So this is for zero cost. I'm okay. Okay, you have to discard a Bant. Okay, so it's kind of a... It's almost got an additional cost kind of added onto it. But I still think that's going to be very useful, very flexible. But if you're flipping to Alter Ego form, then you can use the, the action on Kurt's Alter Ego form to grab another Bant. So yeah. you can flip down, grab, and you're you're actually not lost any cards unless you played the BAMF that turn, but you do get the ready. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like this. Alrighty. Alrighty. Also a superpower traded. It is zero, so death focus doesn't really matter there. Yeah. Or the teleportion. Allowing you to rapidly change form and ready Nightcrawler for further action. If you already attached a copy of BAMF to an enemy, you can utilize Tally Ho, which is a very so far very very cheap kit we've not seen anything over one so it's another so another superpower this is defense so we're not going to get the utilization out of def focus because this is a defense card um unless we it, uh, yeah okay here are response after banff makes nightcrawler the defender of an attack return that copy of banff to your hand deal three damage to the attacking enemy Ooh, this, is <laughs> this is good this is good this is good Basically, like I'm looking at this, I see Nightcrawler's teleportation ability. You have to spend a resource to get Banff back. 
And so I'm looking at this as a zero for three cost. Yeah. Do you want to hear some nerdy stuff? Yes, I do. I'm always here for I'm nerdy stuff. I'm doing a little bit of uh, card counting in the corners. I think yes. he's got two copies of Scout ahead. Okay. And I think he's got one copy of Port Away to change forms. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I can see so far. But I like this card here. This card here, getting, like, Banff back, you're going to be able to, you know, rob liably defend again on your next turn kind of thing. It's going to give you extra one to play with. That free damage is really nice. I like this. You know, I see myself running Nerf of Steel, you know, specifically for this. You know, maybe some other stuff around it, but, yeah, really fun. Yeah. Very cool. Plus, it is a... Well, I guess I guess you are already going to be able to trigger all of your defense stuff because you're defending even without exhausting using the ability uh, for yeah. Nightcrawler. But then also, this can trigger like Flow Like Water or something like that because it's a defense event. And it can be paid for with Nerves of Steel, which is kind of interesting. Okay, yeah. so Tally Ho. Very inexpensive kit uh, to defend, deal a bit of damage, and regain that BAMP all in one go. Uh, you can wallop all uh, if you have BAMF attached to multiple enemies. So we are guaranteed to have <laughs> multiple BAMFs at that point. Uh, you can wallop all of them with a port and punch. What's this one do, villain? Port and punch is a two cost event. Oh, we're getting more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Literally unplayable. Yeah, no, uh, no this, is, this looks good. Uh, the art is kind of crazy. It's attack, superpower, hero action, attack. Deal free damage to an enemy, deal free damage to an enemy. To each enemy, like it said, yeah, with BAMF Oof. attached. So this is giving me kind of Iceman, you know, kind of feels. I haven't played Iceman yet, but with the Icy Blast, you kind of, it will deal damage to everyone with a Frostbite. This is dealing damage to everyone with a BAMF. So if you have just one BAMF out, this is, you know, pretty good. If you have two or three out, this starts to get crazy value. Yeah, and you can deal three damage to the same enemy with BAMF. And so minimum, if you have BAMF attached to the villain, this is a two for six or three effective cost for six, which is right along the, uh, the efficiency curve that we're looking for. But if we have that second BAMF maybe attached to another villain, if it's a multi-villain or a minion, we're way over efficiency at that point. Yeah. That's cool. And it's also super power traded. So, okay. So at this point, I have to, I have to ask, we're, we're going to make a bet. Villain, do you think we're getting a reprint of Death Focus in this Nightcrawler pack? We have to, right? We've been waiting for it. <laughs> We've been waiting for it since Mutant Genesis. <laughs> and where is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, great, great question. Uh, I've also got some other information for you. Okay, I'm ready. Banff is the fifth out of 15th card in his kit, right? Yep. But it's number six. So Port and Punch is number seven, like in terms of the, like, the print number, but there's eight out of 15 in his kit, which I believe means we've got, is that three Banffs? Okay. Five, six, seven. And then this is eight. So I think we've got three BAMFs in his kit, which is pretty good. Three BAMFs. And so this could deal 12 damage for three effective cards. <laughs> That's wild. That now, seems fine. Yeah. I want to port and punch, every, like deal three damage to every villain in um, four horsemen now. Because you can hit four villains with three BAMFs attached. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fun. Nice. That's really cool. Oh, okay. All righty. All righty. So, wallop all of them with a port and punch, and when you're ready to deal a finishing blow, I bet, is this going to be the most expensive card in his tel kit? Teleport drop. Two costs. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. This oh. art is crazy. <laughs> this art is brutal. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, my goodness. Two costs. Discard a copy of Bam from an enemy. Deal eight damage to that enemy and stun it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, two cost. This is right along... I mean, it's multiple cards, but there's easier ways to get Banff. And so yeah. that's a really cheap stun. Eight damage for, I'm looking at this as effectively for resource cost because you have to have that Banff out there. You're losing all of yeah. the abilities for the Banff. But yeah. eight damage, that's really nice. And stun. This, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is really, really good. So kind of like, I see the flow of the game being like, Turn one, you can use an alter ego action to make sure you've got at least one copy of Bamf, right? You get to put it in your hand with your alter ego. Then it's always going to be in your, between your discard pile and your hand free for the rest of the game, you know, with Mike Roy's, uh, you know, rapid teleportation ability. So Bamf is going to be super accessible for this. And this is basically, if you include Bamf, you know, like you say, adding on to the cost, this is swinging web kick that stuns. And <laughs> I do think Bamf, <laughs> I do think Bamf is his main like way of getting value, right? Because he doesn't have like draw a card like Peter Parker or anything like that. So it does maybe punch a little bit above its weight. 
but it is really good. And I think this punching above its weight is going to make it interesting. Do I use Bamf for, you know, what Bamf does? Or do I want to, you know, just slam that eight damage out and then stun it? So this is really competitive, really fun. I do love that art. That's going to be so satisfying. Imagine defeating <laughs> the villain with that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And, Bye. okay, <laughs> yeah. So that is the last card that we have that we see in this kit. The highest cost card that we see so far is two. Every single card that we see that you can pay for is a super powered card. I mean, like, it's looking like we're getting another kind of really cheap X23 style. Like, let's just not pay for things in this kit, uh, especially with yeah. the super power trade stuff. I I'm I'm interested. I I like the idea of having new types of ways to artificially inflate the cost of cards, not necessarily just increasing the number in the top left corner, but like having a bamf attached, discarding a bamf because then that creates a lot of interesting and unique decisions. Do I want the bamf for the the effectively effectively you're trading a ready for it, right? Because you don't have to yeah. defend, you're trading a ready. It's it's a kind of inflexible ready because you, you can yeah. use it to defend but your defense is your best stat so you know it kind of works out very i'm really intrigued by this i'm really excited you know i feel like x gene and dev focus and i can just afford everything <laughs> I yeah the, i think the problem will be if you want to you know do things which require you to get rid of two bamps you know let's say i want to use one copy of scout ahead and then one copy of uh port away i'm gonna need multiple in hand and that might be where it gets tricky but you could use your action to get one flip down or trigo get one maybe you know port away get back kind of thing Yep. You know, that's that's really fascinating you can also scout ahead or not scout ahead yeah port away to to go yeah yeah that's really interesting he looks like he's got a lot of readies um or like at least port away is a ready i'm actually kind of interested to see if you're playing this protection in a solo game are you actually using bamf for its ability are you just using it as another resource like i think a a, a defensive three we already have a lot of ways to ready in protection i may just be using bamf for like the added or like the added resource cost or the added cost to some of these cards yeah and just it's really really interesting playing a normal like protection game I was gonna say, I like that they gave him two four. A lot of the time we see the character with three defense, it's like, here we go again, one four, <laughs> and we're gonna struggle. But you know, you could run this guy in aggression, protection, you're gonna be covered kind of for defense, and you're gonna have decent thwarting minimum, you know. So this is really pretty good sign for solo players, I would say. I think this guy looks really good. Yeah. All righty. Oh my goodness. Nine hit points, nine hit points is a little low, but I mean, like, you're oh, defending yeah. all the time, right? If, yeah. if you Gambit are has worried nine, about so. Yeah. Gambit, oh yeah, Gambit does have nine. Um and he's yeah. kind of immortal it feels like sometimes you know he's very <laughs> he's not immortal but he can tank a lot yeah excellent okay wow. you ready to look at some green cards i know how much you hate green cards so <laughs> i start starting to like them maybe this will change maybe this will be the you know we're on the edge of the precipice and now protection may be my favorite now who knows <laughs> how exciting would that be though okay hey i'm open to it <laughs> Alrighty, so the first two that we have here, we have a zero cost upgrade. This is under control. It's another minion attachment. Now, I I'm liking the design space that we're seeing here with minion attachments. We saw some with suppressing fire. We're getting some in the Iceman pack, Cyclops pack. So this is helping Cyclops. I mean, like we just like anything that prints upgrade <laughs> attached to an enemy helps Cyclops because thank goodness because he was really starting to struggle on that tier list <laughs> you really need some help <laughs> anyways under control attached to a minion one per minion after your hero defends against an attached minion and takes no damage deal four damage to the attached minion well it's to me it seems like okay if i'm protection in a minion heavy scenario maybe i could do something with this but and normally if I'm exhausting, it's to block a villain attack. So I'd have to make sure there are no other villain attacks if I'm going to try and stop a minion. I have to have left the minion out for it to happen. So it's it's pretty conditional on being a minion, minion getting the attacking, and then, you know, me being able to defend it. But obviously Bamf is going to help that a lot. I guess that is part of the intention of this being with Nightcrawler. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Nelson? I... I, it's a very situational card. I, I'm not I'm not sold. This is not going to go in every single one of my protection decks this is not a protection game changer in my opinion um i i go back to one of my favorite heroes of all time quicksilver right because quicksilver gets that free defense and so you can lean into kind of a chump block for the villain and then use this to as your minion control this uh yeah. this would double you could deal eight damage to dragon with this i think 
with that. That's true. That's <laughs> which would be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that dragon under control. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it is... yeah, sorry. I was just going to say zero for four is kind of efficient, but defending against the minion is typically not efficient. So yeah, it's really, if, pe if people have certain special ways to maybe defend without exhausting beyond, you know, Nightcrawler's thing. This, this could maybe get more interesting there, but Valkyrie, about it. Valkyrie with her defense events, because yeah. you don't have to exhaust. Uh, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to find a way to not exhaust and defend at the same time. It's, it's an interesting card. I'd, I'll experiment with. I'm going to say that way, but this one compared to Nightcrawler's kit, you know, it's a little bit of a step down in excitement for me right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The other one that we have here is Change of Fortune. Villain. What does this one do? That's a great question. It is a one cost <laughs> upgrade and play under any player's control. So that's immediately interesting. I hope this is useful to play under other players' control. I'm so excited After for you... this card. <laughs> Sorry, I've read ahead. I think I've just read it. After you defeat an enemy during the villain phase, suddenly under control looking kind of better, exhaust this card, draw two cards. <laughs> that's okay. bananas. That's bananas. Okay. So what we started to see in Colossus's pre-con with powerful punch starting to get more interesting mm -hmm. maybe what's it called counter attack counter punch in protection i think core set was it it's an early card yep you know, we do have ways to hit enemies in, in war the villain path. phase war path oh, that's a big one yeah that's this is really really interesting suddenly i'm very interested <laughs> and i wonder if the rest of his kit is gonna have more retaliate and things like that yeah that's great two cards and playing to any player's control i could bring three of these and i don't know how it would make it work but there's got to be a way to <laughs> I, I think Storm really likes this, right? It goes back to the game that we played yesterday with D20, passing out those retaliates. And if you pass yeah. these on to anybody who can retaliate and take out a minion gets the card draw at this point. It's also a one cost upgrade. So it's, if you do it one time, you pay for itself in the terms of card efficiency. So if you hit two, you're already, you're, you're, you're making entrance interest on the payment. I I'm, this may not be the best card in the world, but this is a card that I want to make work so bad. <laughs> this is basically, in my opinion, almost the start of a new archetype. Because we've seen yeah. retaliate and stuff before, but this is really incentivizing you to do it. And you can build around, I want to get minions out and leave them for the villain round. So, like, villain mm. phase. So, that's Ooh. really like a change in play style like that. Ooh, you can... Okay, so change of fortune and pin down is going to be a really fun combo. Because if you have retaliate and... Pin down reduces a the attached minion's attack by two. It actually may be a villain as well, but regardless, it's going to be a minion. Um, you just sit them out there and let them run into you. Change of Fortune yeah. is also going to be insane against Ultron if you have Retaliate. <laughs> I mean, like, you're doing that every single turn. But also, after you defeat an enemy during the villain phase, if you use that with under control, you have to take no damage. And so now you're looking at an unflappable trigger and change of fortune trigger if you destroy them with under control and your plus three cards a lot of the times the weakness in protection is you're going into the hero phase with nothing in your hand this changes that yeah this is this is really crazy i am really excited to see how this works out and what else maybe you can combo with it that's new again but yeah i am super super down to try this out yeah i i'm already formulating a black panther old hero new trick with change of fortune with that printed yeah. retaliate we got Captain America. I was actually playing Rogue in that game of UND20 yesterday, and I was getting yeah. retaliated that way a lot. There's stuff you can do with this. That's really interesting. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. Um, hmm. We got... Even if you don't defeat that minion, preventing all the damage does let you remove a threat from Astonishing X-Men. This is going to be a new player side scheme. Let's go. What for? Okay. Let's go. Five yeah. threats, but not per player. Five threats. Just a Ooh. base five threat, which is really tough <laughs> in a protection solo, <laughs> but it can be okay in a, a multiplayer game. Astonishing X-Men, victory zero, one cost. After an X-Men character defends against an enemy attack and takes no damage, remove one threat from this scheme. When defeated, stun and confuse each enemy in play. Interesting. That's an interesting card. This feels like a very niche card for multi-villain scenarios. It's kind of reminding me of Jubilee's uh, stun and confuse that hits all enemies as well here. Because so I've got to basically, well, you know, a combined total of the group, I've got to stop five attacks. That's kind of a lot, especially for solo players, what I was uh, initially thinking, you know. And if I'm Colossus, I'm not defending much. Shadowcat, yeah. But, you know, Cyclops, am I defending and taking no damage? No, I'm probably not. So I feel like the pool of characters this suits is quite small, like Gambit, Nightcrawler, definitely. 
um, but also you magic, can just so. thwart it like oh you can just thwart it i think yeah, for some reason yeah. it's the only way you could no I yeah got you... two, i got two into it. <laughs> yeah so of course you, you can okay you can, you can straight up just thwart it you stun and confuse Okay. Which we're getting. So this is. Is this the first card that we have seen with confuse in green? I think so. I think Miles um, Morales, oh, Spider-Man, Miles, the ally, yeah. he can yeah. do it. Okay, this card is suddenly looking a lot better to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played this game before. Yeah, um. <laughs> it's nice because it, it gives you that added benefit of if you have an X Men character, this is slightly better. But that's not what I'm playing around. I'm playing around. Okay, if I can thwart down five. We're looking pretty good. Multiplayer scenario and two player, I think this is going to be the best. If you bring yeah. a protection and a justice player, the justice player is going to love this because thwarting down five is going to be really easy, especially if you kind of built your deck into that. It blocks two activations in a two player. If you're alternating your flips, it's the entire villain phase pretty much. And it's each enemy in play. That's crazy. Float like yeah. a butterfly is going to like this kind of stuff because now you have unlimited targets for, for confused. <laughs> yeah this is such an interesting card i feel like paying the one cost and then getting five threat removal a lot of the times might not you know if i was to be really you know mathematically efficient might not quite be worth the stun and confuse maybe it depends on the situation but if i can defend once or twice to chip that down that starts to be good if there's multiple villains or some minions out that starts to be good if i'm playing let's say four player and even the odds is just you know decimating this anyway Suddenly, yeah. it's fantastic. So this this card will see some play. I think it will be you know somewhat situational, but mm -hmm. I think this is good. I like this now. I'm very happy with this. Okay, so that's astonishing X Men. Oh yeah. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. As for allies, since you won't be taking much damage from enemy attacks, you probably won't mind if Rogue. Okay, so we're getting a Rogue ally, a Rogue protection yes. ally. You want to read us what Rogue does? Let's have a look. So I like this choose art. Choose four cost, much like uh, yeah, the art kind of like pops here. It's kind of like clean. Uh, four cost, just like uh, Gambit's signature ally of Rogue, but probably not discounted in that way. But the same two two stat line, free health, action, deal one damage to another friendly <laughs> character. So this is like me in our game with D twenty, where I kind of you know <laughs> murdered Professor X, <laughs> and I was playing Rogue. <laughs> so this is on theme. PVP Until unlocked. The of... <laughs> yeah. Until the end of the round, Rogue gains each of that character's traits and adds that character's printed thought and attack to her matching powers. This is amazing. There's going to be so <laughs> many broken combos here, right? That has to be something. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking of you have now a four-cost protection ally that can thwart for five if you have, like, Phoenix or if you have um, Ironheart Stage 3. Like, you... The, this pack already like we're, we're seeing some crazy crazy threat stuff but also Rogue. just attack so she's very very flexible because if you want to you can then switch it up and smash someone's face for four yeah this is this is this is insane to me because like you're saying whoever you are with you know you're fording or something suddenly protection can have a really huge fording ally and of course protection has access to med team and thing and mm -hmm. she's an x-men traded uh ally as well so you can put on the protective training upgrade you can keep her around you are fine taking that one damage if she's getting like plus two falling even i would say but plus three is you know a potential thing with certain characters this is going to go crazy and just taking the traits we could put maybe certain different upgrades on we could probably do something with some oh. characters maybe even in multiplayer um you know i want to throw maybe a, a guardians com yep. uh yep. come implant on her from if i'm playing Star Wars alongside uh yeah yeah i mean you could do some some crazy stuff if you had different players or you know spider woman or something i am super super intrigued and this is clearly going to go insanely well with repurpose, I'm thinking, because you boost your stats up. But it then is printed. She... Was it printed? Yeah, it's printed toward an no! attack. No. No. Okay. Okay. That, okay. That, that makes more sense. I was about to say that could be ridiculous. Well, I'm glad <laughs> you're catching the wording. Um, yeah. Okay. So maybe not so much in that regard, but this is still incredibly good. Yeah. I, I see a game time. Any way that you can make this, re you ready up with rogue after you've taken that uh yeah what's up spider ham is gonna like this uh, that's what, yeah exactly <laughs> you get spider ham now now rogue is swinging for a four three spider ham gets a one damage which means that he gets that tune count oh dude that's that's pretty awesome very cool very cool ally hmm I'm trying, yeah, okay, so Guardian, I'm trying to think of the traits. Guardians are kind of the a lot, they have a lot of, like, restricted 
weapons that they can attach. I feel like there's a there like you were saying there's a Spider Woman uh build. There's also probably a Cyclops build in red with like energy there's spear. A Cyclops build. There's always a Cyclops <laughs> build. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh. I'm curious y'all in the comments. What what are y'all thinking about uh Rogue and how how are you going to break Rogue? Jeez. <laughs> Alternatively, you could like Gambit. So we're getting Gambit as well. We're getting a Gambit ally as well. You could use Gambit to power up his stats. Gambit is a basic ally, 3XX3. X is the okay. number of boost icons on cards under Gambit, giving me a Spider-Man Noir feel. After Gambit enters play, look at the top three cards of the encounter deck and tuck one of those under him so that only the boost field is visible. That oh. seems amazing. Oh, so this is going to make global logistics decks. <laughs> so you can set, set him up to have free forwarding and free attack, uh, which is pretty good for a free cost ally. Of course, I guess the, the risk is that you get only zero like boost icon ones, which is rare, but he can, he's going to vary massively, but that is so interesting. I'm really, really intrigued. I, I like the art. I really like the art as well. It almost feels like it has some, like, Nightcrawler just bamfed his way out of the background of that one. Um, I also really like this just from if you pull a zero, it's like, okay, yeah, that stinks. But then that encounter card is out of the deck. So if you can pull a Shadows of the Past, if you can pull a Universal Weapon, if you can pull something that is just going to be absolutely destructive to your game plan, yeah. fanaticism, right? Now he becomes a 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three, and you don't have a copy of fanaticism <laughs> in the deck. I mean, like, that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. huge. I yeah I think I think he's really thematic because it's playing on how Gambit works you know with the boost icons in uh, Alter yeah. Ego. My friend was actually just playing Gambit in the previous game I played of Marvel Champions, and but he's also he's stealing the encounter card. He's using his thief thing to take it away. Yeah, that is so cool. I mm, do you like Gambit or Rogue more here? Rogue, <laughs> Rogue, yeah. <laughs> I just see shenanigans, and you know I'm I'm excited for that one. But like yeah. Gambit, if you're unlucky, you might get a rubbish encounter card and any like one icon or, you know, so he might be, you know, maybe you know, some problems there. He's a little bit risky, but that's kind of exciting as well to me. So, you know, I do really like him. Yeah, he, he is a slightly risky, but I also think that there's a lot of really interesting sequencing stuff that you can do, right? If, if you yeah. pull a card, you can then wait until the encounter deck resets. And then if you chump block with Gambit, that card goes in the discard pile. I think yeah global logistics um any way that you can manipulate the top card of the encounter deck We're and gonna have blindfold uh pre yeah. on cable uh all yeah. that kind of stuff is gonna be fun and you don't i the way that i'm reading this you don't shuffle after you do this so not only are you getting one of those out you get also get to see what's coming yeah that's really cool yeah okay okay all righty maybe well, there's uh I was gonna say maybe there's a tactical world where you give him you know bad stats, but you take away a bad encounter card that would have been your encounter card. So yeah, that is that is actually you know the more I think about it, the better he seems. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is all the player cards that we have gotten in here. Initial reaction is is Nightcrawler something you're looking forward to? Nightcrawler looks like he has potential to be one of my favorite heroes. I love the fast action kind of doing things. But I like having to make choices. Do I use Bamp for this or that? So I've got interesting decision points. I've got kind of fast play stuff going on. Uh, you know, falling in defense kind of being covered means I'm going to be able to play him in basically any aspect, any player count. He's going to be really good in that respect. And mm -hmm. I do think from what I see, all the aspects look pretty good for him. I am super, super intrigued with that. So I'm really excited. And what's interesting is that Unless each BAMF has like a different resource on it, we're looking at physical here. Maybe if they're all physical, we can do something with the physical deck. So, so much potential oh, yeah. for Nightcrawler. I don't remember what your original question is anymore, but I'm just <laughs> excited to talk about Nightcrawler. Uh, I, do I like him? Yes. Yes, yes. I do. Yes, yes, <laughs> what you do. You? <laughs> I, I'm very excited for this. Anytime I see a hero with three defense, my, my inner Marvel Champions nerd goes, yes, let's go. And so I, I'm really excited to see that uh, being able to defend without exhausting is something that I, I'm i very interested in. Protection is my favorite <laughs> way to play. It feels like Nightcrawler is just kind of built for that. Having the two thwart just solves a lot of protection's problems. You oh, can yeah. have, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I think probably so far my favorite thing, I, I think Change of Fortune is probably my favorite 
card in this pack that we got previewed. I'm very interested to see how I can make this work. Yeah, I might I might say Rogue is just really so intriguing to me still. I might put Rogue up there, but then change your fortune in terms of like the aspect you stuff. So, so interesting. And I was going to say, I think it's funny with Nightcrawler how you're seeing, oh, I can defend better. I'm going to go more into protection. I'm thinking, okay, that will cover me with defending. I can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do it either way, right? It's, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. You fi I finally don't have to worry about protection. <laughs> 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 nice, nice. Okay, so we have crazy gang off with his head i i really do like it when they put mod sets in the back of these packs i think that they they're always pretty interesting modular sets but the crazy gang side scheme what are we doing with this two threat per player side scheme villain that's a great question i'm looking at the art and i'm thinking <laughs> what is going on it looks like <laughs> alice in wonderland i like it looks like the queen of hearts or like the queen up here it just it's giving me alice in wonderland vibes yeah, well, the guy at the front is reminding me of, like, ACDC. And then we've got Queen of Hearts as a clown. I see the Grim Reaper with an axe. Yeah. Let me know in the comments how accurate this is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued here. So this is a side scheme, and it has two threat per person. So it's pretty forgiving, but it does scale with the player count. Forced response. After non-elite minion schemes against a player, that's interesting. Minion scheming against a player is not, you know, the most common thing to build something around. So you, if a minion schemes, deal that uh, that minion to that player's a face down encounter card. Okay, mm. so the minion goes from scheming against you to becoming your encounter card. Then if there is more than one player in the game, pass that face down encounter <laughs> card to the next player. So you're passing on the, the minion after it schemes against you. That's yeah. Weird. That's weird. I bet An we're going to... Yeah. And two threat per player. I, I'm guessing we're going to see some when revealed minion stuff here. Yeah. And I just That's like crazy. <laughs> now. Now I'm thinking of like space pirates and like oh jeez, like <laughs> the oh, I guess quick, quick strike, strike doesn't really matter unless you're passing to someone in hero form. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and the teamwork would matter a lot here potentially. Oh yeah. Oh jeez, teamwork. Oh, that's brutal. That'd be super interesting. So, led by the Queen of Hearts. So I think I I was right. It does look like the Queen of Hearts because. Apparently it is the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts <laughs> is a 0-1-4 minion, criminal queen, win revealed, search cool. the encounter deck and discard power for a copy of Crazy Gang Side Scheme and reveal it. If it's already in play, deal yourself a face down encounter card. So this is potentially bad with the Crazy Gang Side Scheme here. But that's really that's really interesting. I like the criminal and queen the combination of traits seems really funny to me. Yeah, yeah. D Zero scheme one attack isn't bad at all, but the dealing the uh, the encounter card if you know when you reveal her and the side scheme is already in play that side scheme if she schemes for zero it's gonna make you pass her on and re-reveal it and you know you could have some kind of you know knock on effect from that so I feel like this might be a set I have to play with to see all these effects in action but I am intrigued and uh, I'm I'm curious for your thoughts on this one for sure yeah. This is this is kind of this is fun because it's a zero one, which means that it's really not a big threat, right? Like it, yeah. it is what it is. But it's the if I don't take care of this, this is going to be a threat later because it's gonna deal yourself. Uh, it's gonna, you know, give it to herself again, potentially pulling out that side scheme, or giving you a face down encounter card. Um, it is for health, which means that the under control can take it directly out. It's not going to be too hard to not take damage with that one attack. Uh, the three boost icon is scary, but I mean, it, it's I'm, I'm curious to see what else, what other cards we get in the kit because I think you know yeah. this this seems to be manageable so far. Now, if the crazy gang had something that was not a acceleration token i think that'd be even that'd be worse but yeah right now i don't i don't i don't think it's going to be too too bad yeah uh, i'm not i'm not super worried i do think when reveal getting a side scheme is you know some cause for concern but yeah like you say acceleration not terrible yeah and so they are all revolving around when revealed effects so the last card it looks like that we're going to see today is executioner so Executioner is a zero scheme. It does look like they all have zero scheme. I wonder if we're going to get a card in this kit that says all minions scheme. 
that would be kind of brutal anyways zero two four so again we can take it out with that new protection upgrade um executioner attacks the friendly character with the fewest remaining hit points oh geez ow if this attack defeats an ally remove that ally from the game oh that's me oh, that's so actually mean. executed <laughs> yeah and it, that's on a win Sorry. revealed as well I guess you so you can step in and defend this right so if you have an ally if gambit's up there protecting the shadow of the past and gambit has one health left nightcrawler can step in and defend against this attack but it's still so mean it feels it feels a lot like crossfire where you know they're attacking yeah. the the lowest attack oh that's that's I so kinda... mean <laughs> I quite like those effects, like they're interesting, but you, like you say, you can defend it, so there is counterplay, and yeah, really interesting with the, uh, you know, Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland kind of feeling here, I see Deadpool here, I mean, that kind of tracks, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> crazy weird stuff is going on, um, I'm intrigued, I'm really intrigued, so there are five people in the side scheme art, so presumably, we could have all the rest of these cards, could just be five different minions. Okay, I would be down for a, uh, from what I see so far, the two minions that we, we saw are not insane power level. They're not easy. They're kind of right there in the middle. And I am happy with like kind of a mini hev minion heavy modular set that is right kind of there in the middle, right? We have a lot of the wrecking crews and uh, that. We have some of the easier he minion heavy scenarios. So it's going to be nice to have kind of a medium difficulty minion heavy modular set that kind of works off of these responses that has some more interaction within its play. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think the only last thing I'll note is that two of the cards we've seen so far have two boost icons. One has three boost icons. So this might be a boost icon heavy thing. Maybe this is kind of to help the Gambit ally a bit. But, you know, you put this in Claw or something, if the other ones follow that thing, and they, they could all have less, but if they have similar... The villain's gonna hit pretty hard, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> oh, and Claw, Claw's gonna get one of these to start if if you get unlucky on that initial draw. That would be funny. That would be pretty funny. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Tallyho with his ability to bamf around the battlefield, Nightcrawler is going to be available in September. So we're looking at a July release for Jubilee. July, August, September. So that tracks on what they are saying. So it doesn't sound like we may be getting a scenario pack in between those two, but there is still there is still potential. I have kept my hope alive to see if that we may be getting a scenario pack for um, maybe after Nightcrawler. I don't know. I want a scenario pack. Out of this pack, are, do you think this is going to be one that you're going to buy, Villain? Uh, as soon as I can get it, I'm definitely going to be buying this just because Nightcrawler himself looks so amazing. I am so intrigued by the protection stuff. I do, you know, Rogue, Rogue is just calling to me. I need this ally. So yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely getting this. The modular set, I'm intrigued by. It's definitely not, you know, like a must-have, I don't think, by any means. But yeah, really fun stuff there. I like this. I, I think the last thing that I wanted to talk about that I just noticed is up here in the top, the, the art for the article. We did not see Signature Ally. And who is this? Do you do you know the lore behind Nightcrawler? Who's this two Nightcrawlers left the right uh, in the right side of the picture? Could that be a signature ally that we're that we're getting teased here? I know very little about Nightcrawler. The closest I could guess is Beast because it's a blue and furry, <laughs> but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Um, maybe uh, he doesn't have one. I don't know. That'd be interesting. He yeah, so let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Is this somebody that we should be familiar with? And if so, who is it? Do you think that that is a potential signature ally? Alrighty, Villain, that was a lot of fun. I will link your deep dive analysis video whenever you put that out down in the video description. But make sure you go and follow Villain Theory and turn on all of those notifications so you don't miss that. His links are going to be down below in the video description. Anything else before we sign off? Uh, no, I think I'm ready to just bamf out of here. Let's go. Alrighty. Thank you all so very much for hanging out. Nightcrawler looks sick. I'm excited to hear what you all think, and we'll see you around. Peace. Bye.